Hi everyone, my name is Betty and I'm from the VMware Multi-Cloud Solutions Team. And today I have Apolog here to talk a little bit about cloud financial management. Apolog? Hi Betty. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Good. I'm so happy to have you here to kind of kick off our multi-cloud maturity video series. And, you know, you head up Cloud Health, which became part of VMware a couple of years, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and Cloud Health really kind of pioneered the area of public cloud management and specifically like financial management. And we've all been in IT a long time and we talk a lot about, you know, costs within the realm of IT. But why is financial management so important um, in the area of cloud? In public clouds, this is actually one of the first problems that customers run into. And there's a couple of reasons for it. Um, for one thing, public clouds have done a really awesome job of removing the friction in sales. They have your credit card, and it's really easy for you to just start adding and using more services. Uh, now, the it's great from a user perspective, but also cha-ching, 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 right? The bills go up. Uh, and then the very nature of cloud, it is elastic, it is dynamic. So scale up, scale down, that is just the basis of the architecture. Now what happens is sometimes people scale up and then they forget to scale down. So you have all of these instances running that you don't really need. And then the other thing is uh, it, it's a lot of small transactions in distributed groups. So before you know it, if you look across your organization and you add it up, there's a lot of spend being uh, uh, done in the cloud. So because of all these reasons, when customers really start digging down on their public cloud costs, they get very surprised. And that's why managing your public cloud costs is so important. Yeah, you always, um, occasionally you'll find a Twitter thread where someone's like, I just got charged like, you know, 10 bucks, where's this coming from? And they can't find it. Um, so I can totally get that. Um, when it's really easy for the user, sometimes, you know, IT doesn't have like centralized uh, visibility or control into what's happening. You know, your team especially has done a lot of work around um, kind of benchmarking um, uh, this area. Can you talk a little bit more about um, how your team looks at that, especially um, related to financial management? Yes. So Cloud Health has pioneered the cloud management maturity model. And this actually works for financial management, but also for public cloud security. Um, so let me maybe walk through the, the different levels in the model. So first, you start with visibility. And that is providing customers access to all of the services that they're using, the amount of cost that they're spending, uh, as well as the security posture. And right there, their eyes usually pop. They're like, whoa, I didn't realize I was using that many services. Or wow, that S3 port is open. So that's just the first step. Now, the next step is how do you optimize now that you know what you're doing? Uh, for the cost side, as you know, public clouds actually provide you a lot of levers. You can buy reserved instances where you pay less if you pay upfront. Uh, you can do things like savings plans. And then for the security side, you can define the golden standard, the allowable corporate standards, and see if you're drifting away from it. But now that you know that you uh, what to optimize, how do you get there in an automated fashion? So that is the next level in the maturity model. And we help you not just identify your potential savings or your uh, areas where you're drifting from the compliant uh, standards, but we automate all of that so that you can take a hands-off approach and we do it all for you. And then you finally get to the next ultimate level, which is around aligning your business objectives to technology. And that includes things such as uh, one of our retail customers who wanted to know the average cloud spend per retail transaction. And, uh, but that is really the ultimate level where you can completely tie your technology to the business. Yeah, so that's like the, uh, the ultimate IT business nirvana state, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and I can only imagine the, you know, the visibility being so eye-opening just when you're using one, one cloud provider, but you know, all the data and all the research shows that you know, most enterprises will probably end up with about two public cloud providers. So that only gets even more complex, right? Absolutely. And in, more, in, in many industries, uh, well, I don't know if this is legally mandated, but it's a best practice to not bet everything on one uh, provider. So almost all the large corporate customers that we have will have at least two, if not three. Uh, in fact, some of the largest customers usually have even more. So there is one customer which has three plus one, three public clouds plus one private cloud, which is VMware. Yeah, and the, and the optimization gets probably gets really interesting so that they can start planning for like seasonality or um, how best they can you know negotiate terms with their provider for the right type of instances as they see uh, what kind of patterns they have, um, usage patterns they have from their application workloads, right? 
Absolutely. And this is one of the most interesting areas, even from a pure technology perspective, which is this is all around analytics and machine learning, learning your uh, daily, weekly, monthly patterns or even yearly patterns, and then predicting what is normal, what is abnormal so that we can provide advance notice if something is completely looking out of whack. Awesome. And then, you know, there's these uh, maturity levels and, you know, the, the, there'll be a level of competency that organizations get as they start to kind of, um, you know, get the visibility, um, start kind of acting on that. Um, the more they know, the better they can kind of pre-plan and uh, pre-configure things and automate. But, you know, when it goes down to some of the specific practices um, that people that you think organizations need to have, you know, what are those? Can, can you give us some examples of what are those things that people should do? Great question. So this is one of the uh, pieces of uh, really consulting advice that we that we give to our customers. So let me start with visibility. So some of the best practices are things like consistent tagging so that you can easily track your assets and you can correlate it with, with cost. Uh, setting budgets and, and tracking compliance versus budget. And what we found is in many cases, they may have the budget at the overall corporate level, but they're not really tracking budgets for the for their public cloud spend, which is you know, very important because it can fluctuate quite a bit. Things like proper amortization for all the reserved instances. And things. And other concepts are showback and chargeback. So if you put these in place, then you start having all of the building blocks to, to be really good on visibility part. Now, now let's go to optimization. And this is all around right sizing and optimization of costs. So things such as termination of zombie instances. We identify the zombie instances, we recommend termination, but you need to make sure that you can automate all that and terminate them. Taking advantage of uh, reservations and discounts. And this goes back to what you were just referring. Once we learn your normal usage behaviors, we can predict in advance. And so you can basically take advantage of RIs and savings plans, for example. Now, when you get into governance, uh, it's important to set non-obtrusive guardrails. So for example, you can set some guardrails as far as, okay, I know that this development team has some uh, performance scale or, or some kind of uh, projects where they might need to burst and, and get a few more instances. But let me set some guardrails. So as long as they stay within the guardrails, it's okay. But if they shoot uh, and, and really exceed the guardrails, then we can notify the manager so that they can figure out what's going on. Um, and uh, also things like automatically acting on the reservations that are about to expire so that maybe you can buy more and get the cheaper rates. Also things like shutting down non-critical uh, systems during the middle of the night. So all of those fit into governance. And finally, business integration. So this really gets into how can you properly associate your business KPIs with your uh, services with the, with, the, with the public cloud services. Some of this can be done by tagging. Sometimes we've seen customers even automate to where they take the monitoring systems, they integrate the data with cloud health so that every transaction we can track and say, okay, this transaction touched these services for this duration and here's your cost. But these are some of the best practices that we recommend to our customers that will really allow them to navigate the different levels of maturity. I mean, they really seem like building blocks and the business integration is kind of a culmination of um, all the function, you know, leveraging all the functionalities at th these different stages. And then it kind of comes together at the very end. So you get a complete picture, right, of yes. the infrastructure, the workloads that are running and then um, how they've kind of, you know, shifted or tuned or optimized over time. Right. Absolutely. And the, the, the we have some customers that have gone to that level and that. Uh, you know, you can see that the audience is different because at that point we're talking more to more senior level execs. Uh, in a smaller company, it, it could be the CFO. In a larger company, maybe a VP or uh, director. But now we're actually working very closely with the business stakeholders because we're we're showing them here's how much each transaction or each activity is costing you, and that is very very powerful insight. I feel like that's been um, that's been one of those uh, golden nuggets of a lot of these IT systems um, over the last, you know, uh, gosh, even decades um, on like how to bring all these things together so that if you say something goes down, you know how much like the cost of service, right? The cost of revenue. What is it doing? Precisely. And this is the, the, this is I, I mean, maybe cloud makes it easy because we can actually get all of the uh, information via their APIs. But this is. The first time in my career, and I've been doing this for a long time, too long to even remember, right? It's always around tying business to IT. But now, because of the rich APIs the public clouds offer, we're actually able to do this. We're actually able to tie dollar values, whether it's an outage or whether it's a transaction. And, and this becomes really, really useful when you're talking to the business stakeholders. 
What have you seen for so for some of the customers that have gone really far um, within the business integration side, the ones that have already reached that stage? How are the conversations different with them um, as opposed to somebody else who's kind of in the middle? You mentioned that yeah, the yeah. you talk higher up, you know, higher up in the organization, but you know, the IT to business con- planning conversation. How different is that? It's it's different in the sense that we're talking to a more senior and PNL exec. And uh, and actually, the, the customers that are at that level, they just love us because they said it makes their job so much easier. They don't have to justify showing number of hours or average uh, employee cost for automating. It's black and white. Okay, here's exactly how much your business is costing you. Here's exactly how much you would lose if, if the service goes down. So it really enables us to open a different set of doors. So typically what happens is uh, in, the, in the cloud management business unit, we're talking more at the infrastructure admin level, the VI admin, the virtual uh, infrastructure admin. But now we're able to elevate the discussion more to the PNL and the business manager. And that of course makes it a lot easier for us because the ROI becomes really, really clear and explicit. Uh, and so it's a, it's a whole new opportunity for us. And then do you find that the the um, executive has, you know, like the, the technical executive has a different conversation with their peers? With their managers, for sure. Because that, that, that's the reason why they love it. Because it's always the same story, right? You go and try to sell your software. And for them, it's a battle. We got to arm them on how do you pitch it to your boss to where you, you make the ROI clearer. In this case, the ROI is absolutely clear. In fact, even before you get to that level, right, the first step uh, is we asked for their AWS uh, or public cloud credentials. And then we, we chunk and process all the data. And then next time they log in, we will show them a report of all of the different services they're using, the cost they're, that they're incurring, but also the optimization potential, including how much they would save. For them, it's so easy to justify that, okay, we need to use this because here's how much we're going to save. It's black and white. It's very, very rare to have that level of clear uh, articulation of ROI. Yeah, it probably puts a lot of, uh, it puts the power of information, like truly like kind of um, a, a tremendous amount of visibility and depth and like this, you know, the opportunity analysis um, for Absolutely. their own kind of planning um, for, for um, as they kind of look at their entire environment. Yeah, and you know, all of the IT folks, and typically they are cost centers, right? And so they're always under pressure to reduce the, the, the expenses. And this is a great tool. And I've um, talked to so many customers where, the first thing I ask them is, okay, uh, do you like the product or not? And many of them start off by saying, hey, I saved X millions of dollars last year. I love it. You know, it makes my job easier. So great to hear that. Awesome. Um, and then, you know, um, with the, you know, the maturity model um, that you've kind of outlined from, um, you know, all the years of work in, the, in this area for cloud health, you know, the team has also done, um, you know, some research and surveys and benchmarking. You know, what do you see kind of in the landscape of, you know, the the, cl- the cloud um, consuming customers that you see, like kind of where does the market maturity look like along that spectrum? Yeah, great question. Now, what we found is that typically because the cloud is so new to many customers, they don't even think of cost optimization because typically for on-premises hardware, it's a completely different process, right? You go through the POs and it takes months for the thing to arrive and so on, right? So they don't usually have the processes or best practices set up. So when we did the survey, I think that was about 800 uh, customers that were surveyed or that responded to the survey, 80% of the orgs were just in the getting visibility phase. Uh, another 16% were in the optimization phase, and then 6% each in the next two phases. So very heavily weighted towards the earlier part of the maturity model. Now, we also did a much smaller study with uh, Cloud Health customers after they started using Cloud Health. Now, because it's a small study, you have to take it a little bit with a grain of salt as far as the, how representative the numbers are. But the numbers, if there are any indication, were a lot better. 40% were in visibility, but 47.5% were in the optimization level. 7.5% in the in the governance and automation and 5% in business integration. So clearly we're seeing a shift once they start using the product and once they start using some of the best practices. Yeah, because you can't act if you don't have the information. Um, so, you know, aligned to that, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, this cloud center of excellence, right? First you start with, you know, people kind of logging, you know, uh, signing up for, you know, any cloud provider because it's easy for anyone to do swiping a credit card. You start getting a critical mass of people using it. And then the organization's like, gosh, we need to do, do something about this. And they start to, um, many orgs are forming these cloud centers of excellence. Do you see any sort of consistency and pattern on like when you're seeing the cus- your customers, um, you know, forming these groups along yeah. their maturity spectrum? Again, great question. So 
usually what we've seen is um, cloud happens when somebody tries it out in a certain line of business. Um, and then at certain at a certain point when the execs realize that, okay, we really need to be serious about cloud, that's when we've seen the companies form the CCOs. And also typically it's larger companies and smaller companies. It's, you know, it's just a few folks doing everything, right? But what we've seen uh, is that they're usually very effective because they're responsible for guiding the, the customers in their journey to the cloud. And typically it's a cross-functional team. So you get the diversity of thought. You have people from finance, you have people from purchasing, you have people from infrastructure, from apps. Uh, and then they figure out what are the best practices, what are the processes, what are the tools to use. And it's, uh, I or we feel uh, from, from CloudTel, but overall VMware, that these uh, groups are really very effective. And, and why? Well, because public cloud is a whole different ballgame. Right. If you look, if you start at the architecture, it's all around scaling up or out, um, and that requires a different kind of cloud-native architecture and, and, and design patterns. And it's a different set of problems because a lot of the hardware and some of the other problems that you have in on-premises goes below the waterline. The, the, the public cloud vendors take care of it. But it introduces its own set of complexities. Microservices go up and down very frequently, so that's a management problem. Applications become more and more important. So the role that these CCOs play is critical. And in many of the customers that have actually moved up the maturity model, we've seen the influence of the CCOE. And it's just interesting that you say they're kind of a cross-section um, of different departments. And it, so it's kind of an ideal target probably for um, as users of a system like Cloud Health, right? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that's one of our core customer bases, uh, CCOEs. But what we're noticing is that because it's cross-sectional, uh, there's also the influence across the different orgs. So, for example, even the core infrastructure or core application man management or monitoring orgs, typically you'll have an enterprise architect that is represented in the CCOE. So you get the you get the real good flow of information. Lastly, like um, as organizations mature, or you know, why should an organization mature? Really, you've mentioned um, cost savings as one of them because you know, zombie instances, you know, miss-sized instances, what have you. What else can organizations expect by investing in maturing along, um, you know, maturing along the paths that you've outlined? Absolutely. So, of course, the, the, the most immediate ROI is the cost savings. We've seen customers say they've saved 25% of their public cloud spend, millions of dollars. Uh, also, things uh, such as the processes become more manageable, right? You don't have this last minute uh, crisis because somebody found out, oh, we really, really exceeded our bills. Now we got to re-architect our applications, bring the cost down, which is always very difficult. Security is an, another area where if you if you keep your security posture in check, then it's a lot more manageable. But let me maybe go through and give you a few specific uh, examples of customers and the benefits that they've gotten as they got into the different maturity model levels. So starting with visibility, Samsung Electronics, when they started, they had essentially zero visibility into their environment. Now they have close to 100% visibility, but, but, but more importantly, what did they accomplish as a result of that? They saved over a million dollars a year using the product because they were able to find a lot of unused instances and terminated them. Now, if you go to optimization, an example is a retail company called Toast. They saved $50,000 in the first month of COVID-19 without negatively impacting their business. And how did they do it? Well, they heavily leveraged our RDS instance usage reports and then did some optimizations that we recommended. Governance and automation, Robert Half, the large staffing company, essentially has a lot of very interesting guardrails in place that allow them to maintain compliance to their corporate standards. And finally, business integration, segment software, uh, really has gotten to that level and they were able to accomplish a 20% increase in the gross margins. So it's it's real. It's yeah. It's it's tied to the real business, and you know it's just phenomenal the ROI that the companies get as they move up the maturity model. Yeah, it's really meaningful at each stage. Um, and Absolutely. one, yeah, and like the achievements from one kind of really feel like justify kind of proceeding on to the next stage, even right. Absolutely. And the beauty is even the first step, the visibility, you can accomplish so much. And that really gets people going and excited. Like, okay, I've gotten to the visibility. I can shut down these instances. That's easy. But now how do I optimize and how do I automate? You know, and it goes from there. So it's a, it's a great uh, 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 feedback loop, I guess. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. And um, 
I want to thank you for joining uh, me in this chat to talk more about cloud financial management. And I'm going to anchor on this one thing that you said kind of earlier in our chat, cloud happens. I think we found a new tagline here, um, cloud <laughs> happens. So go check out cloud health, right? <laughs> Absolutely. i uh, love to answer any questions you have and uh, enjoy talking to you, Betty. Awesome. Thanks, Applock. Thank you.